Hello I'm Karen and in today's video um, because I couldn't actually do it in my tea cosy video I'm actually sharing the history of the tea cosy and tea okay so um, I'd like to do my um, videos where I actually use books and things like that I don't I'm not really very tech savvy to be able to do those word um, powerpoint things and whatnot so I'm doing it my own way okay so um, I wanted to know the history of the tea cosy and surprisingly enough it seemed to be very easy <laughs> um, so we've got this book this book is written by Richard Rutt he was the Bishop, Bishop of Leicester and he did a history of hand knitting and he says tea cosies were invented by the Victorians um, and he goes on to say about the, um, what the sort of tea cosy was about and then he says the first recorded use dates from 1867 and it quickly found place on the tea tables and kitchen tables of all social classes. Um, and it describes that knitted fabric is excellent for insulating. And the first designs were various forms of the inverted bag to cover the whole pot, handle, spout and all. And it wasn't until 1893 in the Weldon's Ladies Journal on the 1st of February and then it recorded a new fashion which was the bachelor tea cosy it says and it gave a recipe that's a pattern by the way and this had two holes in the sides um one for the handle and one for the spout okay now richard does this lovely thing in the back of his book let me just move over here and he's actually done this whole chart um and this is all for the weldon's practical knitter and because the first time it was actually dated was in 1915. So what he did is he worked backwards from 1915 because there was monthly editions and he worked all the way back so that he could then say that volume one, which is, this is a copy of um, the volume one. So number one, volume one, first series. So volume one, number one, series one was dated to 1886. Now, Walter Weldon himself, who actually produced all of these things, died in 1885. So from 1886, there was copies of earlier versions. So um, that's why I believe that he's referring to the fact that it's 1867 for the actual date of the um, tea cosy itself. But he didn't state whether it was actually knitted or crocheted because he does actually talk about crocheting in there. Um, and so this is my um, copy of the the Weldon's crochet series and in here we can use these references so it says the sizes of the crochet hooks mentioned in descriptions are regulated by Walker's bell gauge now the Walker's bell gauge um, was the, the first ever bell gauge wasn't patented until 1847 the Walker's bell gauge came like, like slightly after that so um, we know that these can't these patterns can't be have printed before then even though um, they may well have been actually written before then and so I'm just going to just go through my book this is actually the first ever tea cozy that I can find in my crochet book um, but obviously in his in his um, what in Richard's um, book he actually mentions them looking like a handbag and um, in the 14th series, just turn over a couple of pages now, we can actually see, there you go, that's what the um, inverted bag looked like. So it covered up the whole tea, um, teapot itself, spout and everything. And if I just push my book over a little bit, you can see here, here's how um, there's a sample of the actual pattern, which is um, the Trico pattern, because it says tea cozy and Trico, limpet shell patterns. Now today, you would um, refer to the tricot pattern as actually the Tunisian crochet and I actually crocheted up a sample of it so you can actually see what it looks like and it's really really beautiful um, I just have to practice more at that so I was wondering I thought okay then if, if Richard says that the tea cozies weren't invented until the 1860s why didn't the Chinese invent the um, tea cozy because that's where tea came from and the teapot so I actually did some research so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to <clears throat> move that out of the way and here I don't know how well you can actually see this but I've actually drawn a map 
and at this point now because I know um, those of you that actually can see it that right in the middle I've got Wuhan okay and I just want to say I know that Wuhan has been in the news an awful lot about something completely different okay but it actually kind of helps this video because it helps you to locate where I am in the world okay and I'm not going to talk about why Wuhan's in the news so I'm just going to give you a close-up picture because what I did is I drew my version of the world I know um, slightly out but Wuhan is right over here in China and 5,454 miles away is where I am in the UK that little blob there is supposed to be the island of Ireland Okay, this is Spain, Africa, um, Iran and Iraq, um, India and Taiwan. Okay, that will be Norway. And then over here, obviously, you'd have um, America and Canada. <clears throat> Just so that you've got that idea of where I'm doing this research. Okay, so I I did. I actually, um, I did some research quite a while ago, to be fair, on um, China. And then I went back and... Um, went through it all again for the sake of this um, video so and the Chinese history of um, it's full of legends and lovely lovely stories absolutely fascinating and um, and so I did I went back and I was like okay then so why didn't the Chinese make tea cozy and so to start we have to look at how they make tea and the way that they make tea in their pot is that they, they boil the water, they warm up all of the pot, just like you would do in England, I suppose. But then they fill up their pot all the way so it like goes over the brim and one of the traditions that they've got. And then they do this lovely thing where they swirl the lid over the top and they put it inside and the water goes over the top and then they pour boiling water over the top of the teapot. So they was like, oh, okay, no need to have a tea cozy. Um, so... Um, I thought, well, okay, that's it, that's, the, that's, that's it, you know, like, what is it, seven minutes, that's, that's history of the tea cosy, there you go, Richard's right, <laughs> and, and so, but I thought, well, why not, let's tell you the story all about the um, ancient Chinese legends, because it actually links in to my actual research. So, we're going to begin it, so here is Wuhan in the middle, um, each of my arrows travelling in each direction is approximately four and a half hours if you was driving in a car or it'd be three days if you was walking. Okay, and um, according to the ancient legends, you've got um, there's three sovereigns and there's five emperors. And out of those um, characters that we've got going off there, we've actually got Shenong, who is all the way through, so I'm using him. We've got Liaizu. Um, she's in them all the way through and we've got the yellow emperor and the yellow emperor is married to Liaizu. okay so the rest of the the other um the missing five i'm not going to include them in this because they change their names throughout the things and it gets really really confusing and um i didn't want to make it more confusing than it already is so um i want to first say that the story of Liaizu, um she's actually the one that's the, that discovered the silk and the story there is that she was sitting underneath a, um, a tree, which was a mulberry bush, and a silk cocoon dropped into her tea. So we know that silk became, it was discovered after tea. Now I did go to a lot of research to do my silk. And I know this probably looks a bit gross to you right now because it's like, it's a toilet bowl tube. However, I actually purchased my own, um, my own eggs I fed them I raised them I used the real leaves and everything to be able to feed my, my caterpillars and they actually made cocoons and as you can see there there's a cocoon with a hole in it and this is actually where my female came out of it uh, my other cocoons um, where the boys came out of um, I haven't got those but this cocoon the other side is where another one was trying to get out but that one never made it so that's actually a whole cocoon and all of these little dots on the top are where this female here, she mated with the boy and she laid all of her eggs all over here. And so it was most amazing experience to actually rear my own silkworm. So I'm just saying I've gone to a lot of trouble to actually make sure that I've actually experienced things and tried things myself so I can understand things. And so and silk was such an amazing um, product that the Chinese kept it secret okay and so 
lived it for thousands and thousands of years. And they've dated Liaizu to being around in this area at approximately 4,852 years ago. And from, from her, um, we've got Shenong. He was the man who, he was the discoverer of tea. Okay, and so according to their ancient legends, um, Liaizu, Shenong and the Yellow Emperor were these ancient gods or demigods. And they taught the Chinese how to do their farming. They taught them how to um, control fire. They taught them how to build houses. They taught them how to do their um, calendar. And they taught them their Chinese script. Okay, so... Um, and these were supposed to have happened approximately this time ago. And these are estimated dates from stories that they've managed to get that are actually began over 2,000 years ago. Um, that was actually written 2,000 years ago. Okay. So, and then um, Shenong, he actually lived in um, Yunnan, which would be 23 days walk into the west. But he wouldn't have walked all of that distance because he would have only have, like, walked maybe six days from where he possibly lived and could then got onto the Yangtze River and travelled by the river to be able to get here much quicker. And so if we travelled south down here we get to Changsha, which is where the yellow one of the Yellow Emperor's sons lived. And if we travel to the east we um, get to Chizu where his second son lived. And so there was also the sons of Liaizu because she was married to the Yellow Emperor. And Shenong is the one, he was the medicine man, he was the one that, that discovered the tea, discovered that it was a cure for lots and lots of poisonous herbs and so that's their main beginnings of these ancient gods. Then they move on to another dynasty which is called the Zia dynasty which is dated to be about 4,700 years ago and they're sort of like a semi-mythical thing because they haven't really got that much proof that they actually existed. Um, and if you travelled northwest, they would be about seven and a half hours if you was driving. So maybe like six, seven days if you was walking. But if you travelled seven hours driving straight up to the north, even though I've got an arrow that way because that's the next stage, you would actually get to Yingsu. And that's where the Shang Dynasty is. Now the Shang Dynasty is the place where, I'm going to show you because I've printed these off. Um, this is an image that I've printed off um, from um, Wikipedia and this is actually an ox bone and this is the writing that is um, dated back to be the 3,600 years ago that they actually produced at that time. I also printed off an image because I thought it might be easier to see um, from the Scottish Museum. This is still an oxbone, it's not the same oxbone, but you can still see we've got like these swirls of these patterns, we've got this cross here. And from this writing, this then led on to the Chinese script, because they don't have the alphabet the same as the English do. So, um, and this, I know that according to the stories that the, these gods gave them their language. However, in Jiahu, which I've already done some studying on, was actually where we've got the Jiahu symbols. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once again, I'm going to draw the symbols. I never thought I'd draw these ever again. <laughs> Not in a video anyway. But they've got these symbols that look like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. There. Okay, and that's what those symbols look like. And the Chinese historians wanted to be able to prove that this writing was the earlier version of this, but they haven't actually got any evidence like in between. So this is 8,000 years ago, and this is like 4,000 years ago approximately. So they've got this huge gap. And so what happened in between to get from there to there? Now, I know that when I was um, when I was doing my research, I actually said that in this actual book, I actually discovered that there was an anagram code because I could see the word chain. So I've got C-H-A-I-N. And in here, I actually, it was a trico chain cover. 
Now the trico stitch it starts, this is this, um, begins on a chain and you make make it over the top and also it's a tea cosy so it's a cover so is it a link? Maybe. Um, but from there it led me to these letters anyway in China because China is also an anagram of chain and so I saw this part here as a letter F, this part as an L, this piece here I did as an O, this bit there I did as the U and then this part here I did as another L, this bit here I did as an S, that bit there is also a little V and then I've actually got one, two, three lines, one, two, three lines. And I demonstrated in my other videos how I can actually break all this apart and I ended up, I break this F into um, two more pieces. So I've still got that, I've still got that, still got that and that. The S I broke into two pieces and the V is still the same, one, two, three. <clears throat> and in my video I can demonstrate how I can change all of these into every single letter of the English alphabet and every single number. So as a sample I'm going to just do a number one a number two and a three okay and if I wanted to do letters out of it so a capital E would be the L shape two lines that way or if I want to do a lowercase it would be the curve and a line now I know people might be saying oh gosh he's doing all of this again please think of this like you would fluffy white clouds in the sky and you actually see the clouds in the sky and inside that cloud you go oh that looks like a tree oh that looks like a bird that looks like whatever and this is how this happened to me okay so as much as it might be far-fetched it's still possible okay so what I also did because I was actually looking for the origins of crochet so what I actually did I'm sorry I'm just making a bit of a shade um, I actually decided to actually research more on crochet um, as I do and I've actually got I'm going to share with you now these symbols here are these are in American terminology terminology but they're symbols so you've got the cross or you could have it that way around you've got like this T shape and you've got an upside down V with little lines on it and also um, I've got this book which is all about um, the trico which is now Tunisian crochet and here we can see that we have this swirl symbol here for the magic ring but here we've got the V this way around which is supposed to mean it's a Tunisian slip stitch we've got a line that way which is supposed to mean a pearl stitch a line that way around which is a simple stitch okay so remember fluffy white clouds and your imagination and thinking about how to simplify this into this which stemmed where is my other bit from this so if you look we have this swirl pattern there which is like the magic circle we have the cross which is like a single crochet um, or a double crochet if you was in the UK so what I did is I actually decided can I actually turn this into a crochet pattern okay so my circle I'm going to put at the top and that's going to be the magic circle so I'm going to cross that off I've used it and in, when I was doing the Voynich manuscript this the C was a chain I've got one two three of those I've got one two three chains okay and then the V is a V stitch now a V stitch is um, like double crochet chain one double crochet if you was in America or triple crochet chain one triple crochet if you're in the um, UK so then I decided well I'm going to have this line down because that's half of that so that's one of those so that's still technically like a double crochet and then I got um, another one I was like okay I'm going to put that one there and I've got another line so I put that one underneath it and then I've got another one of these V's <laughs> so I put that one there and I've got another line so I put that there and I've got one more of these V shapes, so I put that there, and I had one line left. So to make this work, I put the line that way. So this one equals a slip stitch, okay? So I tried writing it different ways. I've actually crocheted it, and I will crochet these to demonstrate to you how this actually really genuinely is a crochet pattern. 
but I'm going to do the other version. So we've actually got, we've still got the magic circle, we've got the three chains, but if you have this the other way around, like on here where it's saying single crochet two together, so we're actually double crocheting um, two together, because we haven't got the lines across them to be a single crochet, and we still got this symbol, which is one, and then we've got one of those, still that, one of those, that, and that, and there, okay? So remember, I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my crochet hook and I'm going to demonstrate to you what you can actually crochet from these and hopefully you'll be as amazed as I was. <laughs> um, but we'll have to wait and see. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with the magic circle. I'm going to do this one first. What I'm going to do is just get my biro and each time I do a stitch, I'm going to cross it off. So... So I've done the magic circle and I have to chain three. So this is my first chain. So I've got one, two, three. So that was my magic circle and that was my chain three. And now I'm going to do a double crochet two together or it'll be a treble crochet two together if you was in the um, UK. So it's this is this stitch. So we do one through two, we yarn over, go through two. Oops. And then we pull through all of those three stitches and that's that stitch. That's, so that's working the two together. So I've done that one. Now I'm going to do um, a double crochet if you're in America or a triple crochet if you're in the UK. And cross that one off. Now I've got another do two together stitch. So that's half of it. That's the second half of it. And complete it. So that's that one gone. We need to do another one of these double crochet if you're in America. Cross that one off. And now I'm going to say treble crochet two together because I'm doing it in English terms. Because there's that many different languages that you can do it in. They do it all different. But there we go. Now we need to do one more of these. There. There. And then we've got one more where we have to work two together. So that's one. Sorry, I'm just going to pull some more yarn. And then we're going to make it go together. Okay, so now we're going to pull the end tight. And in the top of the third chain, we're going to slip stitch this together. Okay. And I've got my scissors. I'm just going to cut off my arm because obviously I've got two things to do. So the first one that I actually crochet up, you get this little, like a cup shape. And I'm also going to share with you as well that this is the very beginning stitch. So that is, that's there, right at the top of there. So I'm going to count. So with that, these are my posts. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and we're back to the beginning. But if you count them on the top, you've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. Okay, and you get this little cup shape. All right, so in the code, if I was writing, because no, I'm, this is coded stuff, so so far from there, I've actually got myself an eight. And I've got a 12. All right. This will make sense. Believe me, honestly. Just please bear with me. I know that this is like one of those. Some people don't get it and some people do. So now I'm going to crochet up the second pattern. Um, okay, so we need to begin with a magic circle. And we need to do the chain of three. So that's one, two, and three. And just because I've done those ones, I'm just going to tick those ones off. Now, this is a V stitch. Remember, a V stitch is to create a double crochet. This is American terms. Chain one and double crochet. All right. So that's that one done. So the next one then is going to be another double crochet all on its own. So that's that one. And I'm going to cross that one off. This next time I'm going to tell you in English terms. 
So a V-stitch in English is a treble crochet. It's obviously it's still the same stitch. Um, chain one, but it's just called something different. And a treble crochet. And we'll cross that one off. The next one is to do, I'm still staying English, so this is going to be a treble crochet. Okay, we'll cross that one off. The next one we need to do another V stitch. So it's do the stitch, chain one, and do the stitch. I'm sorry, my tension's getting a bit, I think you've got to go over there. Pull that over there. So I've just done this one. Get my tension back. I need to create another one of these stitches, which is just a, a double crochet if you're in the US or a treble crochet in the UK. And we've got one more V stitch to do. So we go and do the stitch, chain one, work again, like that. And then the very last one, same as this one over here, is going to be a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull my work to get it together. And then there's my chain and in the top of the chain, I'm going to go underneath two strands and I'm going to slip stitch together. Okay, and I'm going to cut off my yarn. And now I'm going to show you what we've just crocheted or what I've just crocheted from 8,000 year old language. You see we've got three posts together there and we've got a space between it. We have three, three posts again and a space. We've got three posts here and a space and three, po three posts there and a space. Which for those of the, you do know how to crochet and do know what this actual pattern is, this is actually the beginning of the granny square. Okay? And no, I didn't design all of this to be able to do the granny square. I discovered all of this. This is through my own research. And so what I did, because to me, this is all coded stuff. To me, this is really magical and this really is like from the gods of ancient China. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen at the top of there okay but we've still got the 12 posts because that could I couldn't make anything else I've tried believe you me so sorry I had a little bit there so I actually thought okay then I did try it because you if you go 8 12 and then you've got 16 is your four times table so there is that possibility but I thought what if we need to have the 12 both those 12 posts and the number 16 yeah what could i create out of this so this is where i this is how magical this is okay and this is how probably active my imagination is too right so um in my normal way of doing it i'm going to change color so you can see what i'm actually doing so this i'm taking this so on i want to i'm looking for liaizu because that's who she was there so i've got my l i'm going to cross off that l I need an I. Oh no, sorry, it's an E next. And so it's so I need a curve with a line on it. So I've got my Lee. Then I want the I, which is there. Then I want a Z. So to do a Z, I twizzle this round. So I actually have this shape, which is that one there. And then I take another one of these. So I've got my Z. And I want a U. So I've got the curve shape there. And I've got the line just to make it look like English letters so I've got Liaizu okay and then I was like well okay then I've still got all these things left over so if I actually look at these um, pieces if I go one two three one two three I've got an H so I was like oh I've got an O I've got another O yeah and then I was like, oh, okay, it didn't work because I've got like a curve left over. So I've got this curve here. So I'm just going to just put that curve there. And I had two lines, one, two. And so I was like, hang on a minute. If I actually did it in this in lowercase, so we've got an H. If I go one, two, and turn that over, so that's one, two, turn it over. And do an O and an O. I've still got these three. If I broke them into separate pieces, 
I actually do have a hook, which is, according to all of my code and my research, it follows the pattern of absolutely everything that I've actually done, which is showing that we can find Liaizu and Hawk in this ancient um, script, which crochets up both a little granny square and a little cup. And if you put them together, because obviously I've still got my tail end so you can't see it properly, but it would make like a little cup and saucer. Yeah, which is all to do with tea. <laughs> and I know. I know it sounds absolutely crazy in one sense, but it's fascinating in another. And to me, I personally think that this is absolutely amazing. And I just want to just say that I actually really, truly believe that these ancient letters here really are ancient letters that lead into the Chinese script. And yes, I can also do all of these things with them and... What they say is, it is what is it? If you have a theory, you can't prove your theory right. All you can ever do is prove your theory wrong. And I've tried and tried and tried and tried to prove my theory wrong. And all I do is come up with the fact that it actually works in all these different ways. So, um, I just would like to say that I do um, believe it is also possible, as I've demonstrated, that actually in China, this these are 8,000 years old that actually crochet up into the beginning of a granny square and this little tiny cup. Um, and if you use the coded symbols and everything else, they actually turn into Liaizu, which is all part of history. So where did these ancient gods come from that actually went to China? Because they didn't come from China, because they're, they're ancient gods. It's like they, all the all the stories they all talk about the ancient gods coming, and like where did they come from? So, um, I do have another theory about that, whether that's actually possible or not. Um, but I did look at historical events just to see what actually happened all those years ago. So I'm going to go back to my little map and say that nine thousand years ago, when these people arrived here in Jiahu and started this settlement here there was a major um, climate change event that happened and on Norway it was all covered with ice and icebergs and everything and these huge icebergs came they crashed off and at that time before that crashed off England was still actually joined to Europe and there was a piece of land there called Dogland and as this um, these giant giant icebergs crashed off they caused a massive tsunami that went up and there's still evidence to this day in Scotland of, of that happening and they actually the the sea levels rose and they actually broke away England from um, Europe and so it's possible that as that tsunami happened that People, whether they was living in their houses or whatever, they must have had wooden houses in those days, which I do like to think that they was, um, they could float because <laughs> they would. And it is possible that the people did manage to, like from the tsunami, did come up, and as the sea, the cold sea, it the um, this cold sea hit the warm sea. This is where maybe that that is the point when the because Gibraltar used to join over to Africa. And it could have broken that there. They could have washed into here. They could have travelled down there. There was actually, um, I know there's a canal there now, down towards the Nile and come out down here. And actually, with the flow of the tide, actually ended up over there. But that's a different story altogether. But, so for today's history, we've discovered that tea actually came from China. They still have a tree that's actually over 3,000 year old, years old in um, Yunnan. We know that these Chinese these symbols came from Jiahu. These are dated to be approximately 8,000 years ago. I can demonstrate how these symbols turn into this, which is their ancient text, which is dated to be about 4,000 years ago, which then also actually translate into a crochet pattern and actually have the name of um, Liaizu, who is part of those ancient legends that crochet a little pattern that actually makes you a little cup and saucer. 
okay so thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing um i'm just thinking did i miss, miss anything else out to do with the history um oh i did i missed anna russell out yeah sorry in the 1800s anna russell is actually um she was the lady in waiting to queen victoria and she was the person that actually was the person that actually created afternoon tea which is where the tea cozy then came into play which is the victorian crochet and so Anna Russell could have crocheted a tea cosy, so could Queen Victoria, because they both could crochet patterns was around at that time. And so um, I just thought, you know, and we know that Queen Victoria also made the granny square because she actually did the granny square pattern for her scarves that she did. So there's all these links that link things together. And check this one out just for that little thing to say how my history and stories have gone a complete circle okay so i'm going to go back to the picture of the tea cozy because for those of you that may have noticed on this same page is actually the granny square that i actually started my videos with my history research with about four years ago and I've documented my journey all over the actual pattern that I used actually from there and it's a different pattern by the way you can actually go and watch that video because I actually begin with a chain of five because I'm actually do the Victorian crochet pattern which is not the same as this pattern okay so there you go it's amazing to me that see, all of my research has done a complete and utter full circle and led me all the way around to be able to go through Chinese history and look at their ancient legends as well as our own legends which every single legend that you look at from uh, Mesopotamia to the Greek gods or everything else they've all got these gods and goddesses that just turn up that teach them how to do these amazing things and so why not why couldn't they actually teach them how to crochet and did they actually really know how to crochet? Was it all to do with like, this thing of actually some kind of evolution plan that they actually wanted to help us to learn? I don't know all of the answers. And all of this, you may say it's a bit far-fetched, a bit like those clouds in the sky. But you know what? I had the greatest pleasure, honestly, watching my um, silkworms grow. I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed searching through all these things learning how to crochet new stitches uh, learning how to use different terms and everything to be able to get to this point so it would be really nice actually if we actually this actually could help prove that this chinese writing oh, sorry this chinese writing wherever it's gone this chinese writing led to this um but what we really need is the archaeologists to actually find us a crochet hook because I know that the archaeologists and I know they get a bit annoyed with me and I'm sorry but to them the materials and things that they made because they've not they can't find things they don't really want to look into it but they did have tools and so it would be really nice so anyway okay thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing um, thank you for all the comments that I get um, I have some absolutely amazing comments I have to admit okay so I think I've covered everything bye for now